Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed the three different kinds of burns, first degree, second degree, and third degree, and we talked about the differences between each of those and what steps need to be done in order to care for a third degree burn, generally speaking. Now we're going to talk about four more conditions of the integumentary system that are a little bit more pleasant than burns. These are albinism, anevis, freckles, and mangioma. All right, so let's start with albinism. So what is albinism? If somebody has albinism, they would be referred to as albino, such as this skunk right over here. And the first thing you'll notice about this albino skunk is that he's got white fur and also red or pinkish eyes. Now, what causes this? And so any individual, skunk or human or any other creature that has albinism, has an inherited recessive condition. Okay. Uh, recessive meaning that you have to have two copies of a recessive allele, genetically speaking, to actually develop albinism. And what it specifically is, is that there's a deficiency of the enzyme that's involved in the first step of melanin synthesis, and actually some other steps as well. So remember that melanin, as we talked about in previous videos, was the chemical that actually gives darker pigmentation to skin cells, that is keratinocytes, uh, and that it also involves hair as well. And so if you can't synthesize melanin, then all the integument, that is the skin and the hair, is going to appear very, very light, pretty much white. Okay? And so the enzyme that we're talking about that catalyzes that first step in melanin synthesis is actually called tyrosinase. And I have an entire video on this, and I recommend you go watch it if you want more detail on this. But if tyrosinase is non-functional, you can't synthesize melanin, and then you're going to have albinism. And so just to be more specific here, the melanocytes, which are skin cells that generate melanin, in albinism, they're unable to produce melanin due to the inability to perform the first step in its synthesis, which I mentioned was catalyzed by tyrosinase. And seeing as people with albinism do not have melanin, they're going to have to be more careful than other individuals who are able to make melanin because when they go out in the sun, they're not going to have their DNA protected from the sunlight. Remember, that's the job of melanin. In keratinocytes that have received that melanin from melanocytes, the melanin protects the DNA in the nucleus from mutation. And so people are going to have to be a lot more careful with albinism, particularly when they go out in the sun. Okay? The second condition I want to talk about is something called a nevus, or more commonly known as a mole, which is shown right here in this picture. So a nevus is a harmless, localized overgrowth of melanocytes. So remember that melanocytes exist in the stratum basal of the epidermis. And as I mentioned in a previous video, those melanocytes make the melanin and then transfer them into nearby keratinocytes. And these cells that you're seeing right here of the stratum corneum, therefore, have way too much melanin, okay, because there's way too many melanocytes in this area. Now notice, it's not dark everywhere. It's not like your whole body is a mole or a nevus. It's just this one localized area. And so that's key with a nevus. It's only a local area, but it's an overgrowth of melanocytes. It's not that the melanocytes individually are more active. It's that there's way too many melanocytes. Okay? And this is a condition that rarely becomes malignant but it should be monitored for changes suggesting malignancy, which is something we'll cover in the next video when we talk about cancers of the integumentary system. But the key with a nevus, or mole, is that it's just an overgrowth of melanocytes. Each individual melanocyte is not necessarily more active than the rest. There's just way too many of them. On the other hand, freckles are an area of increased melanocyte activity. So I didn't show freckles here, ran out of room, but I think we all know what freckles are. We've probably all seen someone with them or we have them ourselves. Freckles are yellowish or brown spots that are over the skin, okay? And they represent areas of increased melanocyte activity. So again, they're still localized just like a nevus, except a nevus is an overgrowth of the melanocyte cell itself, whereas freckles are increased melanocyte activity. So where you see a freckle, that's not more melanocytes. It has the same number of melanocytes as the other areas of the skin. That freckle just has increased activity of those melanocytes. And remember what the melanocyte activity is. It's to make melanin. And so by having more melanocyte activity, you have more melanin, 
and then there is the dark spot, which is a freckle. And with freckles, the degree of pigmentation is based on both sun exposure and heredity. So, uh, for example, if someone goes out in the sun more than another individual, that person who goes in the sun may have darker freckles than someone who doesn't. And also, freckles are also hereditary. Some people may not have any at all. Some people might genetically have some. It's determined by both of these factors. The last thing I'm going to discuss briefly is what's called a hemangioma. Uh, hemangiomas are most commonly seen in infants like this because they're a congenital condition that a baby is born with. And what they are is skin discoloration due to benign blood vessel tumors. So these areas where the skin of the baby is red, what that is is actually a blood vessel tumor where the blood vessel cells have just grown and grown and grown. They continue to divide just like a cancer, but they're benign, meaning they will not metastasize. And so they're pretty much harmless except for the fact that they give a distorted appearance to the location they're at. Okay, But this is what's called a hereditary hemangioma. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you learned a little bit about these four relatively common conditions of the integumentary system. And one thing you really need to make sure to do is to be able to differentiate a nevus from freckles, know what the major difference between those is. And it also might help to know the deficiency, specifically in albinism, that is a deficiency of the enzyme tyrosinase. All right, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.